Welcome to part seven of the MC2105 restoration series. In part one, we learned about the history of Macintosh and some details about the MC2105 amplifier we're restoring. In part two, we recap the power supply. In part three, we recap the input board. In part four, we replace the thermistors, the input capacitors, and recap the driver and meter boards. In part five, we tested the capacitors we removed and powered up the amp for the first time since we began the restoration. And in part six, we cleared up some distortion caused by the speaker switch and replaced the level controls. If you missed those episodes, you may want to go back and check them out. In this episode, we'll rewire the headphone jack for the correct left-right playback and use the amp's test points to verify that the circuits are running at the correct voltages. Let's start with the headphone jack. As you'll recall from episode 5, I discovered that when using headphones with the MC2105, the left and right channels are reversed. Thanks to some viewer input and research, I learned that the left-right wiring for headphones wasn't actually standardized when our amp was built. I originally assumed that the jack was wired incorrectly at the factory, but not so. Many headphone jacks from pre-1970s equipment are wired this way. Here's a little background. The quarter-inch plug commonly used for headphones was introduced way back in 1878 for use in telephone switchboards. Originally, these plugs were monophonic and had just two conductors. The tip carries the positive signal and the sleeve carries the common. These are called TS cables for tip sleeve. When stereo was introduced, a third conductor was added to the TS plug called a ring. These plugs are called TRS for tip ring sleeve. The current standard for a TRS jack is that the tip connects the left channel signal, the ring connects the right, and the sleeve connects to the common. To remember this, think R for right and ring. You can also think R for red as that's the color code used most often when wiring the right channel of a TRS plug or jack. Our jack has the left and right reversed, so we simply need to swap the tip and sleeve wires. Let's begin. This is the headphone jack here, and these are going to these resistors here, which are used, they come directly from the amplifier before the output transformers, which reduce the voltage to be appropriate for the headphone level. They use the purple white and this purple wiring. This is actually correct going into the jack, following the, the correct color coding. So it appears to be wired incorrectly within the jack itself. I look quickly at removing this shield from the jack. It's a really, really nice jack, very high quality, shielded. And I didn't want to force that off. So I think we're actually going to swap this purple for the white purple and vice versa. So it'll be a little incorrect up here, but I think that's better than trying to uh, force open this jack. It might actually be easy to open up the, the jack and do that, but... Um, I didn't have any luck and I didn't want to start working at it with tools to hack it up. So we'll just do it this way. It'd be nice and simple. Let me turn on the fume extractor, get our solder remover, and we'll remove the solder from these two terminals and swap those wires. Here we go. Okay, now that we have the wires removed, let's reverse them. The white purple will now go on the outside. And our solid purple will go on the inner portion of the terminal. Looks like our wires are getting a little frayed. We have enough here. I think I am going to strip these because um, these are starting to break. Start a nice fresh bare wire here. Clean up our work a little bit here with our flux removal pen. There we go. We've successfully rewired the headphone jack to have the correct left-right positioning. To help speed the diagnosis of a faulty electronic device, it's helpful to check the voltages at each test point to compare to the manufacturer's specifications. If a board has a distortion issue, for example, checking each test point for bad voltages can help isolate the issue. The bias voltage of a tube or transistor is critical to make sure a device is operating at peak performance and efficiency. 
An incorrect bias in an amp, for example, can lead to distortion, lower power output, and component failure. With transistors, bias voltages can be as little as plus or minus a fraction of a volt. Helpfully, many schematics list the correct voltages for different points of the circuit, so it's just a matter of finding those points on the device and using a voltage meter to confirm the voltages. As most electronic devices use a grounded chassis, you'll typically attach your meter's negative probe to the chassis and use the positive probe on the test points. This isn't always the case though, so make sure you're positive about your negative before you begin. Per Macintosh's instructions, all voltage measurements for the 2105 are made with respect to chassis ground and they can vary by plus or minus 10%. When measuring, there should be no input signal, Input voltage should be 117, and the level controls should be in the lowest position. We're not having any obvious troubles with the amp right now, but as we've done so much work to it, now's the time to confirm that all the voltages are okay. Let's begin. Now let's check a few voltages throughout the amp to make sure that we're in line with Macintosh's specifications. This is the schematic here for the input board and we're going to look at four points. These two should have about 34, 35 volts positive and these will have 34, 35 volts negative. Those points on our board are right here. We've got the red, the red, white, the yellow and the green. The red and red, white should be positive. 34, 35 volts, and the white, green, and the solid green should be in the negative 34, 35 volt range. And this is with the amplifier at about 117 volts. Let's turn the variac on and the amplifier on. Let's monitor our voltage here. I'm going to slowly turn it up. Don't pay any attention to this. You're watching this. Right now I just have the ground terminal connected to the meter, so you're seeing some millivolts as I uh, turn it up. Okay, 117 is going to be right about there. Let's watch the uh, fluke here. We're looking for 35 volts. Oh, I am on AC. Switch that to DC. Here we go. Just about 35, and this one, 35, perfect. Now these should be both negative, 34, 35, just about right, and this one, also good. Great, so those check out. Let's move on to some other voltage points. Let's now check the voltages on the output portion of the amplifier. We're looking at the bottom of the chassis and the driver boards are actually installed from the top, but here we have the socket terminals for those two boards, which as you recall, plugged in to the sockets. So we have good access here underneath the chassis to all of the voltage points from the driver boards. This is for the right and this is for the left. And each one of these is numbered and also the wires are color coded so it's very easy for us to use our schematic to locate the various points and to check the voltages. You'll also notice that I placed a little masking tape here. Uh, that's just to protect myself as I reach in with the probe just to make sure I don't touch anything that's of a higher voltage. And again, we have our input AC at about 117 volts. Now, before you use these terminals on these sockets to test voltages, I would recommend that you go through and with the power off, obviously, just go through and clean each one of these terminals off, remove that dried flux. During some preliminary testing, I was getting a couple of areas that were measuring uh, zero volts when they really should have been 35 volts or so. And uh, first I thought there was some troubles and I realized I just needed to sort of uh, scratch away that dried off flux to get a better connection. Also, I did note in one of these terminals here for the, uh, the left uh, socket, one of the wires was left a little bit too long and it was dangerously close to connecting with the uh, adjacent terminal, so I just trimmed that off as well. Here you can see I have the schematic for the output boards and just to make things easier on ourselves, I've Mark the uh, relative voltages from the different points and color codes uh, to just make things easier as we go along. Each one of these sides needs to be measured. They share the same numbering. So for example, here we can see that point three, terminal three, which is our blue wire. Okay, blue wire here, blue wire here. This is the terminal three for the uh, right and terminal three 
for the left should be at 90 volts. 5, which is this blue, should be about negative 35, and so on. All voltages should be checked with the level controls at the most counterclockwise position and with no input going into the amplifier. I've had the amplifier warming up now for a good 10-15 minutes, and it's always a good idea before you check voltages, whatever device you're, you're testing. Leave it on for a good 10-15 minutes, let everything stabilize. Let's begin our testing. We have our Fluke multimeter set to DC mode, so observe this area here for the readout. And let's start with pins number 3, okay, which is our blue. Okay, now we're supposed to have about 90 volts, and uh, we are definitely coming in high at about 98 volts. Let's check the right-hand channel. Okay, also high at about 98 volts. So I'm just going to make a notation here on our schematic that the measured is about 98 volts. Let's move on to number 5, which should be negative 35 volts. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Coming in just about right. Uh, let's check our right-hand channel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Very good. Let's move on to pin 6, uh, green wire, and should be also negative 35 volts. Very good. Good. Pin 7 should be at 0.8 volts. Very close at about 0.744. Our other side. Excellent. Also at about uh, negative 0.74. Moving on to our orange white at terminal 8, we should have negative 34 and a half. Very close, that's excellent. Also good on the right hand side. Let's move on now to pins 10 and 12. Pins 10 are black and pins 12 are yellow, and these are supposed to both measure at 0 volts. Okay, so let's see. The first one is our black. 0 volts on our right hand channel. Let's check uh, pin 12 now. Also just about right and the left are black. 0 volts and our yellow. Excellent. Virtually 0 volts. Pins 12 should be at about 0.5 volts and that is an orange. Very close at about 0.8. That's pretty close to 0.5. I'm gonna let that one pass. Orange 0.78, also very good. Pins 14 should be 35 volts, and that's the red. Just about 35 on the right, and on our left, just about 35. Good. Pins 15 should be 80 volts, and that's the blue-white right here. And a little bit high there, too. This pin 15 is coming from the same electrolytic as the blue, so that those could be related. 85.6, let's check our right. Yeah, a little bit high at 85.6 or so, and let me just notate that here. Uh, measured, 85.6. Okay, let me do a little investigation to find out why these uh, voltages are a little bit high and see if that's something that we need to be concerned about. Maybe we need to make some adjustments to the resistors on the uh, power supply. Here's pin three and here's pin 15. You can see they're both on the input portion of this board. Our output portion voltages are all very good. So this input being a little high may not be a problem at all, but let me just double check that, okay? I'll get back to you. This part of the power supply provides the voltages that were a little high when we were testing the amplifier driver boards. The power comes in on this side from the transformer, is rectified by these two diodes, passes through these three resistors, and then goes on to the filter capacitor. At the bottom of this 270 ohm resistor, to the right we're supposed to have 90 volts, and we're actually getting 98 or so. And to the left of the 270 ohm resistor, we're supposed to get 80 volts, but we're getting about 85.6. I've checked the resistance of these three resistors, and they're all well within spec. I also checked the two diodes, and they are also performing just fine. So I think what we're going to do is just leave things the way they are. Trying to adjust these resistors may end up causing troubles down the line. And having a little bit higher voltages on this part of the power supply doesn't concern me too, too much. As I said, everything in the middle stages of the amplifier and the output stages, voltages are testing just great. So I think we're going to be fine here by leaving this all alone.
That wraps up Part 7 of the MC2105 Restoration Series. Stay tuned for Part 8, where we'll test the amp for output wattage, harmonic distortion, and more. To stay updated, subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.